<gasps> I got it. First try. Hey, how's it going? I'm getting this thing on the boom here sorted out. Uh, well, this thing is the boom. I'm getting the boom sorted out. This rocket booster here in the middle is currently four long. Um, bu -bu -bu -bu. And now it's like seven long. <laughs> I'm hoping this fixes my boom problems with the weight not being able to carry anything. I think that goes there. So we know for a fact we can't lift old purple McPurple over here. And I'm really just hoping that it is a weight thing. Come on, no, don't roll away. No, it doesn't work at all. That rocket piece that I stretched out has, um, it's hiding. Hold on. There's these two bits here that I'm highlighting. They are rocket barrels. So each rocket booster only gives me five mass. And so I've exchanged 15 mass basically along here, right? Well, it's 30 mass in total for 80 mass by using... Uh, barrels instead. I think I might actually be missing a spot along here. Maybe? It should be okay. I wonder why it's not moving though. There must be a track missing. Oh man, I'm dumb. Of course there's a track missing. The whole top thing is the track and the bottom is the track as well. Oh, please. Please, please, please. Maybe I should put like a distance sensor on the back that tells you when you're at the correct length or the correct distance away for this to come down without hitting anything. Mm, nope, it's not the weight. Not the weight of that piece anyway. See how it's not quite straight anymore? It's bent a little bit. It doesn't explain why it does this though. So next step is to see if making the boom heavier makes it any better I mean it seems strong you know it can lift the whole truck from that back piece <laughs> now it's a bit wonky uh, it doesn't matter for this test if it's wonky or not oh man so where's the difference between these two trucks Okay, let's check the mass. We've got 4,300 mass on this guy. This guy is 7,200 mass. Where is all that mass? Is it all just weight blocks? There's a lot of weight blocks in here. Let's just make this guy heavier then. Whole bunch heavier. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, that's that's a lot of mass to suddenly be different. Like, what? Three, six. I need to somehow find 4,000 mass? How are they so different? 4,000? Am I reading that right? 4,000 mass. I need to like shuffle all these controls around as well. Okay, let's flip everything around. Oh no, all the numbers are all wonky. I hope that works. I hope that's all correct. Um, what was I doing before that? Um, I need to find like 7,000 mass somewhere. These barrels weigh 40 each. Wait, doesn't one of them weigh 80? Nope, 40 each. We're just legitimately way heavier. Probably not heavy enough. Oh, okay. Here we go. <laughs> uh, well, I guess that's the solution, though. Why is this truck heavy, though, is the question. And how can this one be heavier? 
because I can't just do that. I can't just stack rocket boosters or barrels everywhere. Let's get them side by side and have a look. Yeah, it's odd, isn't it? Because they're about the same length. Try and get them the same height. Yeah, this is quite strange. There's a lot of equipment in the back of here and there's microcontrollers which shouldn't weigh anything. There's a big tank in here. A uh, fresh water tank. I don't think that would weigh that much though. The engine's a little bigger. There's no bed. This is hollow as well which is strange. This um, boom is totally solid, is the only real difference. The ladders, ladders must weigh a lot. Three. Uh, pivots, do pivots weigh a lot? Pivots create buoyancy though. Mass one. Door frames, it'll be the door frames, won't it? They weigh five each, I've got them going like I've got way more on this truck though. How can I have so many more like heavy mass blocks on the American truck and have less mass? What the hell's going on? Okay, at least at least I know what the problem is. Okay, let's let's just do some let's just focus and do some decorating. Get it all sorted. I think back here is fine. I need a fuel flap or something, so I think I need to get rid of a big chunk of this. Just make it a normal side panel thing. Get a pivot and make a fuel flap. Um, the fuel flap can be on this side. I think everything can just be on this side today. I want this fluid hose to be like inside the truck, you know? So if I put it in there, that block behind then needs to link into the fuel tank somehow. Hmm, I kind of wanted it to be down here though. This means I have to put the pivot down low. Wait, that doesn't work. What am I doing? What am I doing? I really want it where that pipe is, but then there's a pipe there. That pipe is a driveline pipe. Um, okay. Wait, that pipe's not a fuel pipe. The fuel pipe is going across the top after the gearbox and then pivoting its way or splicing its way in. So what I should do then, because I want to put the hose, the fluid hose on this side. I need to cut this whole thing through here. Okay, so now my drive line is on the other side. I can use these spots here. What am I doing? It needs to come forwards because of uh, where the tank is. It's kind of messy, but it'll do. And then I usually put the hood latch on the same button as the fuel flap. And I like to put the fuel flap outside. So what if I put it here? It's fuel flap and then hood latch. Do you think having them like that's okay? If I put them inside somewhere, I could put them on the floor maybe. Is that a solid? No, it's not. 
I don't really want to put them on the floor because that's kind of weird. I don't mind putting them in the door, but then I'd have to move this pivot somewhere. They'll go there for now, I suppose. So let's find the hood rotation. It's coming up to this guy here. We'll rename this microcontroller hood latch and fuel flap. We only need one composite in, but we need another number out. Fuel flap. And this is more or less the same as a switch box. But on channel, I think the fuel flap's on channel one and the hood's on channel two. So it will begin on state will be on is zero. Get rid of that purple truck for now so it doesn't keep asking me if I want to spawn stuff here. Nice. Also nice. I might limit that a little bit. It only needs to go like half the way open. Oh. That's not good. Why does it do that? Could be fighting something. Could be the pivots are going the wrong way. No, pivots are going the right way. Yeah, something about that door frame that was in here was having a bit of a fit. Yeah, I think that's fine. It's just enough to like get your hose in. So I need to be careful about what I place in here. I want to put a light in here that turns on whenever a player is present. So this is an open space which kind of sucks. It means whatever I do, I need to try and limit how big an area this is. So it is, this is the center right on this pillar. So that's about a meter in every direction. So let's change this to 1.25 1. 1. meters. And that's gonna be what turns on the interior light. I wonder if I can hide that here because the thing's gonna rotate down over it. I don't think I'm gonna get my grill in here because then I have to get rid of that. Wait, why is this still up? Hmm. Something's happened to my dash rotation. Yeah, see now it's rotated down. You can't really see the light so much. But it's obviously illuminating things in a real bad way. It needs to be up in the roof. That's better, just in the roof. It's on when you're in the bed. It's on in all the corners, on pretty much everywhere. I don't know if it's turning off when I get up really high or not. I think I could make it a little bit dimmer and connect it to a clock as well. Yeah, this is, this is my door light logic that I haven't tested. Let me run you through it. Over here, we have open door. So if any of those doors, if any of the buttons get toggled on, so this is the exact same logic for opening the door, it sends a signal into the switch box here and the on state is 0.7, so I'm gonna get a brighter white light. Then that goes through into the composite switch box, which is gonna turn on if a player is detected. And then that changes the color of the light. 
if the player is detected and it's also night time, which I'm detecting from this clock sensor, which I don't have a clock yet, then the switch box will allow these signals to come through. So what I'm realizing right now is that it doesn't work exactly how I want it to because I want the door light to come on regardless of the time. So that would mean I need to do a little bit of switching further down the track. So if the player is detected and it's night time, turn the light on to 0.3, which is fine. Makes sense to me. And then the other way to turn the light on. I don't think I want to do any adding or anything though. I could just do another switch box, another one of these. Uh, no, I couldn't. Oh yeah, I could. So the off signal would just be like this thing. If this thing is not on for detecting if the door is open, then you will just accept any other signal from the time sensor and the player sensor. Then if the door is open, take this number instead which will be the 0 0.7 so that will go off regardless of if it's nighttime or daytime need a clock should I try and put the clock up here it's a bit fat though eh? what about if the clock was in the dash uh, hmm not sold on that can I turn the clock upside anyway no it's got a the clock needs to have a face available to the outside so hiding it is the best option so night time if I open the door there you go you get a bright light and the door closes and it goes to a slightly dimmer light enough to see the dash and everything before you turn on I guess when the key turns on, all the lights will come on. Or actually it could be when you turn the headlights on. And then if I stop and open the door. Doesn't matter how close I am now, because it's detecting the signal from the doors being open. Close that, and it turns off. That's good, that's all working. I think for this front grill, because of the issues with it clipping on stuff, I think I just need to use just need to use some fluid ports. So these are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I need a seven wide one of these. So we're going to save this fluid port one fluid port seven x one fluid, and it'll be this water inlet. Say so seven. <laughs> That's the wrong way. Uh, okay. That's the right way. I don't think you need to worry too much about these ones getting pasted. I think they're quite happy to connect. Here are those. Hmm. That's fine. I would have liked it if it had some more personality. But I think I need to make sure it closes properly. Yeah. And so with having all these spaces on the sides have no hitbox, it's not going to interfere with the pivots anywhere. It's only got to worry about that very middle piece touching the door. I feel like on the sides it should have like a fuel tank or something. Can I make a fuel tank? The belt pieces could be really useful for this. They kind of look like tanks, but I want to maybe get one where it's like got the step in it. And that's where she would need that kind of piece. And then probably an ammo belt, do you think? I want the top of it as well, you know? I want the top of the tank. And then maybe I need the whole tank just to like sell it that it is actually a tank. I 
I think that's the way to go, but then how do you get to like the step look? How do you get it to look like a step? Um, what do you think? What do you think? I'm trying to figure out if I can put like a step on it somewhere, but I don't think I can. It's real fat and long, isn't it? You can kind of get stuck in it, so I'd need a couple of invisible blocks if I was going to do that. I don't like it. Something's wrong about it. I think if I was going to do that, there needs to be like a black stripe along the bottom. I mean, I like that better. I like having the black stripe as the thing. So what if it's not an ammo belt? What if it's just a rocket? Because then I can get a tank looking thing the whole way. Nah, you wouldn't even know that's there. What about like a wedge? Because a lot of people do this just to give you some depth. <laughs> that's not right that's not right I think I do want a tank in here but it's got to be like it can't be a goofy looking thing let's just leave it as a big solid piece and find something else to decorate um, I could put some stuff on the hood some more fluid ports maybe oh, I feel like the hood should maybe have um some rope anchors on it. Maybe, maybe in the middle. And then maybe it needs like a little wedge. Like that. I'm thinking of like little, little venti things. Should I do that? That's a bit crazy, don't you think? It's a bit too much. Uh, it's not bad, but it is maybe a bit too much. Let's leave that and figure out how to do some headlights. So I could put headlights in... Uh, can I put them inside something? Is there like a window that I can stretch? Not not easily over a one by two. I think it wasn't even too bad just having the light sitting on the ender like that or on the bumper. If I was going to integrate them somehow, I'd have to chop out this wedge here and put a new wedge in. I don't think I can get a one by two wedge modified though. I think I'll put the headlights on the outside just so I've got some headlights and I should put some like indicators and brake lights and stuff on the back as well. How much space do I have back here? Uh, not enough. I was thinking I could do some actual stretching of the paintable blocks and try and get more lights because I want to have an indicator, a brake light and a reversing light but I won't have enough space for all three of these. The one on the outside here I'll make my brake light and this thinner one will be my reversing light. How did this end up light grey by the way? Was it always light grey? Hmm that looks better. The front one's different though isn't it? Uh, because it's on black. Or it's on a dark grey anyway, so that would be why it's like silver. Maybe it should be silver. Uh, it looks weird though. Okay, anyway, lights. I'm going to grab the texture I used on my other trucks. Because it's good and I should recycle.
All these other ones I've used like the colors of the paint. I think for this I'll use just gray. Might even try and offset it a little bit. So usually what I'll do is I'll go up or down 20 and that'll give you like a lighter and a darker version. You can go either way of it. So 89 is the lighter version. And then I'll just do this and it's like over the top. I don't necessarily need indicators. Uh, I mean, I've ugh, I've got space. I would have to put the indicators like in the in the middle though. Or hmm, should I? Should I? Please also be indicators. I don't want to do all the painting and then find out they're not indicators. What about if I just cut and paste them all across? The brake light is probably the biggest one you want to have. I don't want to end up with just the exact same lights, you know. I would rather, rather have them look a bit different. What if I just make them curvy? Okay, I guess I'll do that then. <laughs> Didn't really want to. Paintable indicator. So offset gray, I wanna go 10 um, lighter or 20 lighter. So I've got 69, so I need to go 89. And that will be my light color for the top. And then go down to 49. And that'll be the dark color. I wonder where this needs to be. Like, does it need to be a bit lower or a bit higher? Then I'm gonna grab some of these colors. Oh, I deleted that truck before I could grab the colors off it. Whoops, I think it was this one. Do they look different? Yeah, that different. Bring it back. Bring it back. So I want to get the additive color. Cause see, it's it's a very strange orange, but when you paint it on, it looks kind of yellow. One of those things where like the additive the additive color just looks quite different than what it what it looks like over on the paint tool. Same with all the other colors. You know, like red is very dark, but when you paint it, it's very bright. I did a mistake. <laughs> I think white is just white. Yep. I did another <laughs> mistake. <laughs> I should get kids to draw a coloring in books now, but they have to use a mouse. So I've got my lights, I've got an indicator. Okay, two indicators on the sides. I don't think I'm gonna get any indicators on the front. I'm gonna change this light here so that it just is always on whenever the player's in there. Yeah, because I like I like being able to see, you know. <laughs> the clock clock is a good idea, but not really not really important. This was the doors, so that comes off there, say. Okay. Okay. What else needs to be in here? Other than like adding heaps of weight. Maybe I need some tools. I need like a welder to weld up any broken cars. So maybe this side can have tools in it then. Like, yeah, I can put tools on the interior piece and then have pivots open doors. How big does the door need to be? 
only it's it's not a good door is it it would have to be like the whole thing but then it's rotating back into the boom that should be okay one two three it's a pretty small toolbox isn't it Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it'd be nice if I could put something else in there. I could put something small in there, but it's like, what's the point? What is the point in that? I've got to find out which walls I need to paint as well. I think I want to paint all the interior ones gray. I can do another uh, uh, because I've got the pivot here. Uh, it would have to be offset by a little bit. It'd have to be like this. Fire extinguisher. I don't think the fire extinguisher should be something that you like hide away. Oh, I need to get rid of these things as well. Copy, paste, copy, paste. So I'm going to put another instrument panel in here. Front toolbox, toolbox. Maybe I just say this is the toolbox. It's got an arrow pointing at it. You'll figure it out. Got a rope and a welder. You know what, I need a key, I think, for the tail trailer hitch. This one on the back here, I feel like there should be a key somewhere to turn that off. Where would it go though, where can you like access it? Release trailer. Additive yellow. I'll leave it grey. Grey's probably alright. I've been playing for so long and I've got like nothing done. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about all the weight that I'm missing. I don't know how I got it into that purple truck. Let's just figure out what I need for gameplay, right? So I need to be able to drive my truck. I'm not sending any fuel or battery life into this here. How much does a battery weigh? I'm going to put a big old battery in here and that's going to be the main battery I think and then I'll put a breaker in. I'll get rid of this clock so I don't need that anymore. I'm going to put a breaker somewhere probably in the engine bay maybe. No if there's if there's an issue and you needed access to the breaker you would want to be able to get it from underneath. Is this piece here? Ah, oh, okay. What if I put the breaker in like sideways here like that? What do you think? That's kind of weird. Actually, I'm putting another wedge there. Okay, looking for a place for a breaker to go. I feel like it should be near the battery, that's all. What about here, what's this? Yeah, that'll be fine. So we've got that one and then this connects into the big battery. Okay, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. Last thing I want to do is use this space for um, another like equipment locker. So in one of these, it's going to be all first aid defibrillator back and paint these so I think it can go sideways bunch of first aid kits I could just put some ropes in here that might be helpful extra ropes you never know when you might need an extra rope
in this side though it will be not welders because i have welders oh uh, maybe i should put the fire extinguisher on this side what did i put in here in a, a rope i'm gonna put a fire extinguisher on this side it keeps all the emergency related stuff on one side and then I can fill this side up with ropes and a cable and a hose. That's not a cable. So the hose is good for refueling and the cable is... Well, the cable's good in case you need an electrical anchor on your winch or something. If I had the space, I would put a little maggle thing in here, but I might have to just stuff it on the side somewhere. You should always have two maggles on electrical connectors for this kind of recovery truck. One on each side is actually a good idea. What I did on my other truck is I used winches to automatically retract them all the time, but they were inside a, a cupboard thing. They were inside a, a thing like this. So I move the first aid stuff out and have a little maggle cupboard. Because it's the right size. Oh uh, no, that won't work because I have to cut into the thing in the back there. Where can I put these? Did it work? Because you can pick up these little maggle things just from the maggle. If you've got one, you can like swing it around, and then when you're done with the job, you just connect it back onto there. And it should drag itself all the way back. Uh, <laughs> it's like stuck under the truck. God damn it. Okay, that's that's what I need, but I can't have it like that. It's going to get stuck under the truck. <laughs> this is just dumb. This is not going to work. I could just dangle them off that, you know. Uh, I think that's what I've got to do. I think that's what I've got to do. For now, for now at least, this is where they will live. Why is this indicator wrong? <laughs> uh, my indicators are backwards. Oh, how did I roll over? How did I roll over? I was thinking about this for decoration, having like a barrel or a pipe coming all the way along the side here. I think doing pipes would be better. How long is this, by the way? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So this is the basic idea. You have one pipe in the middle, which is stretched all the way out to the ends of these pipes that go down. And then you use two wedges and stretch them all the way out through the gaps where you need to overlap some of these pipes. I think actually what I would do is bring this one right up to the edge of that pipe. So you can stretch these two by three and then I guess you just do another one by three in the middle like that. So it'll look like this, we've got all three wedges and then I just need to get this pipe in the middle which I don't think it's got any R values on it yet. Oh, that was lucky. I just pasted some random values and it went into the right number. I think this one would be like nine. 
No, it'll be like 11, won't it? And maybe I can change the color of these. Uh, I don't think I can without just replacing all the colors. At least I can do that, you know, I can change the face of my widgets later on. Uh, but I can't change that face, which sucks. So, how would I do this? I would save it, figure out... Wait, that's not the right button. Figure out which colors are on which. Do do do. Hopefully this will just merge straight back on. And then mirror, yes. This is one of the pieces that doesn't mind getting mirrored. I think that's just some extra interesting detail, you know. American truck. Um, I don't have any controls for the two winches up here though, do I? Oh no, yeah I do, these are those things. And the maggles. I think it's kind of ready, you know. The thing I don't have anything for is this instrument panel in the middle. Okay, so I need to find like 5,000 mass from somewhere. What I can do with some of these is get more barrels put in the base because that's you want to have your weight as low down as possible. So, and same in here where I've got these weight blocks. Um, I don't want to cut open where any wheels are, is the main thing. It's barely added any weight. Uh, barrel. This one's got 80, but you need the ones that take up the right amount of space. This is 200. Is 9 times... 40 is 360 so using these 40 weight ones is the best way to get a lot of weight down low I'm just going to close it up and see how that works uh, the actual truck isn't that heavy you know let's replace this purple and try and hide as much of these controllers as I can Shouldn't be hard. They should all just go in, in here. The last thing that I think I need to do is put on an electrical anchor somewhere. So what's this? What's happened with this? Ugh. You want to have an anchor somewhere that you can access in case you completely lose all your electricity and you just need to connect just to something to give you a jump start. So I'm looking for somewhere below. I think there's a breaker on this side. So I'm going to put the anchor on that side. That should be easy enough to find if you climb in under there. And now I have to connect all the electricity and then we should be good to go. Okay, back in career mode. And I want to try and spawn a mission on the land. Land mission, please. New mission, the hangar is fire at the Coast Guard. Yep, it's obviously further away than a truck can go. The fishing boat, no. I think what they need to do is have, see this board that I'm looking at while I'm asleep imagine if you could just interact with something like that and it will give you missions in the vicinity of wherever this board is it's like I can't I can't make it up there and having to sleep and wait for missions is so dumb if you could just run up to a, a pin board and be like yes show me five missions available in the area here we go a door panel is on fire I mean, it's not, it's not anything I want to do, really. Wow, we lagging, we lagging.
Man, look at that. It's only just over starting. Alright, let's go. Let's see if we can drive this truck away. Look at the ground clearance. That thing hanging down at the back is the boom. Wow, it's, uh, it's a bit jittery. I need to f figure out how to do some steering re reduction on this. I didn't hook up the speed sensor. <laughs> I don't know how fast I'm going. I'm going too fast. That front wheel is coming off the ground. We made it. And it didn't crash or anything. It's pretty, pretty smooth sailing, really. I've got to get around to the back of this facility. I've never even been here before. I don't know what's around here. I think it's this way. This building over here, probably. I think it's this one. Hmm, maybe it's this one. Is it inside or outside? Oh, I can go through, okay. Where did I put the fire extinguisher? Oh no, I didn't connect these. <laughs> didn't I do all the logic for them? I did it for one of them. <laughs> Thank god it was the one with the fire extinguisher in it. That'll be $3,000. <laughs> uh, this truck is pretty neat I think there's a lot of space on the side for detailing as well like in here could put a huge logo if I wanted to um, right now I'm going to try and head over to the outpost that's around here I think maybe I can sneak out one of these holes in the wall don't need to worry about the off road we're made for off-road. Uh, maybe I do have to worry about the off-road. I mean, that's a cliff, not really an off-road. I reckon if I go in this direction, I'll end up where I want to go. Ah, oh, that looks like water. Wow, that was fast. Excellent braking capabilities. So it stops as soon as it touched the ground. I was a little bit worried.
Uh, I'm going to save it and because I want to hit this bridge at full speed and these bridges are notorious for killing trucks. <laughs> uh, it was a little bit sketchy but it didn't didn't kill it the way I thought it would so that's good same with coming off them it's a little bit dangerous is it this way? I want to get there before it gets dark it's always crap recording in the dark There it is. So now I can return this to the workbench. Well, there's a couple of things I need to fix on this. One of those hatches doesn't work. The boom's sliding in and out on its own. The whole thing's not heavy enough to be able to lift things. But generally, I think this is super cool. And it's, it's close enough, really, that it's usable now. So hopefully I can get some land-based missions and go and recover some vehicles. I really want to try picking something up with this or connecting a rope I don't even have any rope anchors on the back of it so maybe I need something like that yeah I want to try and tow something with it now thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time